Hello, good morning. How are you today? Uh, I just wanted to read uh, to you uh, uh, and share a little bit from the book of Revelation. And we're going to be looking at chapter one and why this particular book, it is the last book in the Bible. And to be honest with you, this was not my favorite book of the Bible to go to because I didn't quite get it. But recently, this February 2017, um, a team from IHOP, International House of Prayer, the Ignite team led by Corey Stark came to our church in Windsor, Ontario, and uh, it was amazing. I camped out at the church, literally, pretty much. I went home, though, every day, but there were four sessions per day for uh, there were four set four sessions per day for five days and uh, two or three sessions for the other three days so seven days straight i was at the church i took time off work because the presence of god was so powerful so amazing and one of the things they talked about was the book of revelation and shared about uh, jesus christ and how amazing he is and how the bridegroom is preparing his church and for his return and how he's coming back to judge the earth and how we have nothing to fear once we dedicate our lives to him and are living for him so i just want to share a little bit about from the first uh, few verses in chapter one and what they mean to me because since february i have been camping out in the book of revelation i have not been able to leave the first five chapters of this book that God just keeps revealing so much to me and showing me what he is doing uh, in my life and in the lives of people around me. So here we go. Revelation chapter one. I'm going to read the first eight verses, but I'm going to focus on just a, a couple, a three or four of them. The revelation, chapter one, verse one, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all the things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. <coughs> Excuse me. John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion for ever and ever. Amen. Verse 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so. Amen. Verse 8. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Okay, so the verses that have been speaking to me, the ones that I have highlighted and that have been jumping out to me literally every single day. There's hardly a day that has passed that I have not looked at this particular chapter and these verses that I'm going to isolate this morning. It says, Grace be unto you and peace from him which was and is and is to come. That is my heavenly father, the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He was and he is and is to come. He is the one that dwells in eternity. He is the ageless one, the timeless one, the one in whom 
it sorry he is the one in whom eternity dwells he does not dwell in eternity eternity dwells in him it tells me that grace unto me and peace for me it tells me that god wishes me well and he is extending goodness to me this day every day that he allows me to be here on earth and the same applies to you grace be unto you what is grace grace is god's empowerment God's ability, God's enablement, God's power to live a godly life on this earth, to live a victorious life on this earth. So this morning, God is extending grace to us. And peace, what is peace? Peace is literally the Son of God. It is the presence of God. It is the presence of His Spirit. Because where God is, there is peace. It is his presence dwelling with us and in us. So he tells me peace from him, my father, the one in whom eternity dwells, which is and which was and which is to come. It tells me that he is the unchanging one. Therefore, I can count on him. And then he tells me in verse 5, and from Jesus Christ. He's telling me that grace and peace are coming from God and from Jesus Christ to me today. And now it begins to describe who Jesus is. It says that he is the faithful witness. What is he witnessing about? Who is a witness? A witness is one who has seen something, has been somewhere, and is able to testify and say, look, I was there. This is what happened. So when it's telling me that Jesus is the faithful witness, Jesus has been with the Father from the beginning. He came to earth to redeem us, and he's now returned to the Father, and he's on his right hand. It's telling me that Jesus is the faithful witness. What has he witnessed? He's witnessed the goodness of God. And he testified of it and he showed it to us on earth by casting out devils, healing the sick, by being our deliverer, by being our healer, by being our friend, by being the lover of our souls, by being the shepherd, the good shepherd who, who takes care of the sheep and who brings them into good pastures. He leads us beside living waters. He comforts our souls. This is Jesus, the faithful witness, the one who shows us who the Father really is. Jesus showed us the heart of God. Jesus forgave the woman at the well. He gave her living water. Jesus forgave the woman that was caught in adultery, even though they never brought the man. And there was two of them, double standards. Jesus said, let him that is without sin cast the first stone. That is my Jesus. He was showing the heart of the Father. That is why he's a faithful witness. Jesus is the one that healed the woman with the issue of blood. For 15 years, Jesus, he shows us, who God really is. So that is what it means to be a faithful witness, to testify of one. And he's the first begotten of the dead. He was the first to be raised from the dead, from spiritual death to life. And therefore we have been raised from death to life also. For we were dead in our sins and in our trespasses. But when we accept Jesus Christ into our lives as our Lord and Savior, which I did January 29, 1984, Sunday night, rainy at about 10.30 p.m. in Ibado, Nigeria. When I did that, I was raised from death unto life, and I became like my Lord Jesus, another one begotten from the dead. He was the first, but I am one of many, and so are you, and so can you be, if you're not already. And he said, it says he's the prince of the kings of the earth. He is, in the New Living Translation, it says he is the commander of all the rulers of the world. We see the world right now, we see a lot of issues, a lot of problems, but Jesus is head over all. And the scriptures enjoin us to pray for our leaders and those who are in authority so that we may live a godly life and a peaceful life here on earth. So we will do that and we will continue to do that. But Jesus trumps them all. And that is why the scripture also says that he's coming back. He's coming back to judge both the living and the dead. So all these leaders that have come before and gone and the present leaders, Jesus is coming back to judge and he's going to make all things right. So don't worry. 
Let us just hold fast and allow Christ to be the anchor for our souls and the tether for our minds so that we don't fly off a handle out of fear and trepidation of what's happening right now. Let us trust Jesus, the shepherd and bishop of our souls. So it says here that unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Every time I see this, it fills me with hope because every day I sin, I fall short and I am not worthy of what he has done. But he says, I am worthy because I have come to him through his blood. And it says he washed us from our sins in his own blood. I remember back in Nigeria, we used to wash clothes by hand. Everybody remember when we would wash our bed sheets, our clothes, our parents' clothes, uh, and we would wash by hand. I always get a visual of Jesus washing my sin and cleansing me when I see this. And I just see myself clean. And finally, it says that he has made us kings and priests unto our God, his father. He has made us kings, which means I am seated at the right hand of Jesus Christ by, at the throne of God. I am seated with him in heavenly places. And therefore, I am really, I'm, I'm looking at life more and more now from the perspective of one who rules, who reigns with my king because he has elevated me. Because God has elevated him, he has elevated all of us that have accepted him. So we are kings and priests. And what is a priest? A priest is one who offers sacrifices of praise, of worship, of adoration. In the New Testament, we are kings and priests unto our God. And therefore, we are worshiping him and serving him and honoring and blessing him. So today, let's take our place. I love you and I bless you. Bye.